Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I wanted to uh, give you guys another review. I just actually finished several of these. I wanted to get caught up on my reviews. And in this video, I'm actually going to be reviewing Manjaro, the XFCE edition. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here I am with a freshly installed Manjaro 18.0.3. This is the same install that I did during the installation video. So if you're curious what the installation process looks like in Manjaro, I do have a video for that. It's already on my channel. Go ahead and check that out. And what you see here is a completely unchanged installation of Manjaro. This is the XFCE edition, so that's the desktop environment that you're seeing. There is a custom theme here, but essentially it is XFCE for all intents and purposes. So if you've used XFCE before, then you pretty much know what to expect. Now, the important thing to mention about Manjaro, if you didn't already know, is that it's a rolling distribution. So you might be wondering what that is if you've never heard the term before. Rolling essentially means that there's no reason to ever reinstall your distribution. With other operating systems, it's common to do a clean install, especially if you're worried about clutter from a previous version of your operating system being in the current version. And some Linux users are the same way. Most distributions are not rolling. They basically have a six month release cycle. Maybe it's two years. It depends on the distribution, but there is a new release and generally you upgrade to that release. Manjaro does have versions, but there's no reason to ever upgrade. Rolling means you install once and then you just keep updating forever. You never need to reinstall or upgrade to a major release. In this case, we see that the version currently is 18.0.3. Uh, that will, of course, change since this is a rolling release. Depending on when you're watching this video, that version is probably different, but the version number just refers to the most current snapshot of Manjaro. What you see on the screen right now is actually the welcome screen, or as they call it, Manjaro Hello, which will show up when you first log in. You could basically disable it here, but it gives you some links to forums, the chat room, um, you get a readme, information about the current release. So for example, if I click on forums, the default web browser, Firefox, will open up. And here we actually can see various ways that we can either discuss Manjaro with other fans or request assistance if for some reason we are running into a problem. Now I'm assuming if you're running into a problem, you're going to Google it first and just use your due diligence to try to figure it out on your own. But if you can't, then of course you could come here to the forums. If you're a newbie, for example, we have the newbie corner. And the reason why I'm even bringing this up is because one of the most important things when you're checking out a distribution is the size of the community. I mean, a distribution can be amazing, but if there's really no one else to talk to that use it, you're gonna be kind of lonely. And that's effectively worse if you have an issue and the size of the community is small, then it's gonna be harder to get support for it. Now here, we can see that it's actually a very busy community. There's quite a few messages here. We can see the totals of messages here. And I think that's a good thing to check out when you look at a distribution is the size of the community, like I mentioned. But that's not the only reason why the size of the community matters. Security updates matter. You wanna make sure that the distribution you're using is actually going to um, give you timely security updates, that the community is actually big, that they're invested in the platform and keeping it up to date and just keeping up on the current happenings. And this distribution is actually one of my favorites. It's been quite some time since I've actually used it as my daily driver. In the past, Manjaro has been my primary driver for you know, a pretty decent chunk of time. I did enjoy the distribution quite a bit. And I don't remember why it was that I switched away from it. I don't know if it's my ADD or the fact that there was an actual reason for that. But to be completely honest, I did move away. And you know, I have to say that I did have a very memorable um, time where Manjaro was my default distribution. And here I could see that it hasn't really changed that much. Now, to be fair, the XFCE desktop itself hasn't changed very much. But we can see that this is XFCE tried and true. So if I open up the home directory here, 
and we can see that it is Thunar, which of course is the default file manager for XFCE, as expected. Again, you can see the custom theme here. We have green icons. So we have a custom theme. So let's go ahead and check that out actually. So if I go here and then I look for settings, go for a settings manager here, I'll click on appearance. We can see that the style is Adapta Eta, or is that Eta Maya, or something like that. Papyrus Maya, I'm not the best at pronouncing things. Um, you know, custom icon theme, you get the idea. Even though that this is XFCE, they did do a lot of work with customizing this experience to make it as uh, user-friendly as they can. Now, XFCE is a great desktop. I've used it on a lot of distributions, but to be honest, it's default theme is kind of boring and, and not so great. So it's no wonder why they went through the effort of uh, creating a custom theme here. I think it's pretty much required at this point. Uh, XFC is a great desktop environment, but its aesthetic is not its most strongest point. So here, let's go ahead and check out some more of the release here. We have a Bluetooth manager here, if we have Bluetooth devices. I don't have that, so I can't really test that out. I don't actually have a Bluetooth device with me, but it's nice to see that that functionality is built in. And if we right click the battery icon here, we can actually adjust the brightness, which of course you can't see, but I'm gonna make it brighter for myself at least. We could edit our power manager settings from here, decide what happens when the lid is closed and things like that. So definitely that is good to have. That's a pretty much a required thing. So for updates, I believe that's what that is. Yep, 17 available updates. So this is a rolling release. You're gonna get a lot of updates. And even though I literally just installed this today, perhaps my installation media needs to be updated or something, we have quite a few packages here, a decent chunk. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply these. Put in my password. It's doing a full system upgrade. One thing I do wanna mention that I'll get into more in just a moment is notice how the Linux package says Linux 4.19. That is one of the things that I love most about Manjaro is the way that they handle kernels. Now with Arch Linux, you have the kernel. You also have an LTS kernel. So you, you could argue you have two, but you basically have mainly just one. And anytime you update it, it updates to a new version replacing the old one, which means if you in update to a newer kernel and it's not compatible with your machine, maybe you'll reboot and it doesn't boot, you can't access your machine. And I've had this happen on Arch. So with Manjaro, you can follow specific kernel versions. So this is Linux 4.19, so that's gonna be kernel 4.19. So to confirm that, I'm gonna go ahead and open a terminal emulator, you name dash R. And as I said, we are on 4.19. Pretty cool. All right, now the system is up to date. I'm gonna go ahead and click the back button up here. And you can see that the update manager is actually part of the same application that handles installing applications as well. So the package manager here is actually where you would go to install new applications. So I can go to categories, for example, I'll go to games. We have various games that we can install here. An internet section for internet apps. Maybe you want a different web browser. Maybe you want Chromium, for example. Empathy for chatting or whatever it is you want. You can go through the various categories here to look at the software that's available. And it couldn't get any easier than that. You basically just select what you want and then you go ahead and apply it. So it's definitely very easy to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and try the search. And you know, I, I wasn't expecting this, but I, I searched for Steam because I wanted to install that and I see that it's already installed by default. I don't remember a distribution ever installing Steam by default. That's pretty cool for me. May not be cool for those of you that don't play games. Maybe you'll find that to be a waste of space, but at 3.2 megabytes, I guess it doesn't really matter. If you do open it, it's gonna download a lot more. Now I do use Steam though, so I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And while that's updating, I'll go ahead and close out of all these other windows here. All right, so Steam is open. So this leads me to a really important test. For me, it's very important that any distribution that I consider using full time is able to do this one very important task. So what is that task? It has to play Final Fantasy VI. If a distribution can't do that, it's worthless to me.
So does Manjaro play it? Let's go ahead and find out. All right, so Steam has finished installing Final Fantasy VI. It created this icon here on my desktop. This is going to play through Proton, which is a compatibility layer in the Linux version of Steam that allows non-native games to run. This is a Windows game. Let's go ahead and see how it does. I'll go ahead and open it up. Yes, I know it's going to run under Steam Play. I'm well aware of that. Let's just get right into the game. Let's see if it works. So here it is. Final Fantasy VI is running on my computer with Manjaro. That's awesome. So it's very important that it passed that test. And now that it has, I can actually consider using Manjaro full time. And I just started over here, so I'm actually kind of near the beginning. So you can see that it actually is working and it seems to be running fairly well. I would have to give it more of a run through of various battles and things to know, but I need to make sure that my games are running. Basically, all work and no play, that's not my thing. You know, I, I work really hard, system administration, things like that. And you know, at the end of the day, it's time to play some games. And Steam is working fine here in Manjaro, so it gets a thumbs up for me in that regard. So I'll go ahead and close this. So I mentioned the kernel earlier and the fact that I like how Manjaro manages that. So I want to show you guys that right now. So I'm just going to search for Manjaro here. It's the Manjaro settings manager that we want. So I'll open that up right here. And this allows us to customize things specific to Manjaro. And this is an important app here because, you know, you might need to customize your hardware, for example. Maybe you might have a proprietary video card. You might need to change the driver to make your games work better. But I don't have that in this case. But I do want to take a look at the kernels here, so I'll click that. And you can see that we have several versions of kernels available for us. And this is great because maybe we might find that one of them works better for us than others. It even goes ahead and tells us if it's an LTS kernel or not. And if it is an LTS kernel, it's more recommended. And by default, we have 4.19. We don't have a newer LTS at this time, but as soon as there is another one available, we should have that here. But if for some reason 4.19 doesn't work for us, we can move to a newer one. We can go to kernel 420. We can go you know, to an older version if we need to. But basically, we can customize what kernel we're using, and then when we boot, we'll have a selection of which kernel we want to boot with. So the fact that they give us this customization is great, because that's not something that you get by default in Arch Linux on which this is based. So we'll go ahead and close this. Now, something that's pretty interesting is if you click on the application menu and go through the applications, I'm just going to cheat and type it, you'll notice that you have Microsoft Office Online. We also have LibreOffice as well, so I'll click on that first because that's actually my favorite Office suite. We have version, what do we have? 6.1, the latest as of the time I'm recording this video. And this is the Office suite I've used to write all four of my professionally published books. So LibreOffice, despite what some naysayers might say, is plenty capable. If you can write an actual book with it and get it professional published, well, you know, that just goes to show you that LibreOffice is a quality product and it's actually a great open source solution. But if for some reason that doesn't work for you, you do have Office Online installed here, which I believe is just a shortcut to the web app. I don't actually have a Microsoft Online account, so I can't show you this. But basically, this is going to be like a web app you can use. You can sign into your Microsoft account and then use Office Online. Now, the thing is, I'm not a Microsoft user. I don't really know much about Microsoft's online or their office or any of those types of things. So, you know, your mileage may vary. Let me know in the comments if this is functionality that you need and if it actually does work well. I'm actually curious to find out. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this since I don't have an account to test that with. I just wanted to show you guys that it is available. Now looking through other applications that are installed by default, we have categories here on the right. We have actually quite a few applications. We have an HP device manager, so if you have an HP printer, there's a chance that it might actually work out of the box. You can customize your login manager. You can edit the menu. There's a menu, menu editor down here that you can see right there. Mouse pad for you know, simple text editing, that kind of thing. Some basic utilities here. Of course, we already mentioned uh, Dunar. Anyway, uh, moving along here. Games. Now we have Final Fantasy VI, which, you know, is great to have. And Steam, which I installed. These were not there before, as you know. 
under graphics by default we have GIMP which is a great Photoshop alternative pretty much every graphic design thing I do is done in GIMP for internet again Firefox is the default browser we have Pigeon for chatting and we have some other services here hex chat for IRC for example multimedia we have audacious for listening to music VLC for video files I already talked about the office suite we have various shortcuts to office apps here which you already know and then we have settings we have a lot of different things here as well so there you go Manjaro is a fantastic distribution from what I've seen so far when I used it several years ago as my primary distribution, you know, I never had any complaints with it that I can remember. And again, I don't remember even why I switched away from it. Maybe I just um, wanted to try another distribution or something like that. I don't know. I don't remember any actual issues. It's been solid. It's been stable. It's fast. It's efficient. I love the fact that you get additional kernels. I also love the fact that you have a settings manager that allows you to customize your hardware and the drivers built right into it. I love the fact that it's a rolling release. I can install it once, just keep updating. I don't need to reinstall or upgrade and risk breaking my system or anything like that. I can basically just keep rolling with it, pun intended. And I like that. I think that's a really cool thing to have. A rolling distribution is a great fit for a lot of people. Yes, it's more bleeding edge, but maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want the bleeding edge. You want the latest software. And if that's you, Manjaro's great. It gives you the benefits of Arch Linux without the barrier to entry. I mean, Arch Linux is not the easiest installation to do. I have installation videos on my channel if you're interested in seeing what that process looks like, but Manjaro makes the process very easy. And again, I have an installation video specific to Manjaro on my channel. Feel free to check that out if you're curious what that process looks like. So there you go. That was my review on Manjaro. I recommend you guys check it out. I have nothing bad to say about it. It's been fine in my experience, and maybe you guys will enjoy it too. If you have a moment to take a look at this, go ahead and let me know in the comments below what you think and how it runs on your machine. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about it. I'll check out the comments. And then in the meantime, go ahead and check out some other videos that I'm going to have uploaded very soon. Definitely some great things coming, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the description below. And there you'll find a link to purchase my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, 2nd Edition. You'll also find a link to my Patreon page, as well as my Amazon store, which includes a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.